Again, hello, dear colleagues who have joined us recently, and thank you all who have been staying with us from the previous talk. It's Quality Engineering Day 2023 that is conducted by the Global Testing and Pro Quality Communities. We are happy to see all of you with us. And uh, our next speaker, uh, Zafar Maksudov, with the topic Codeless Automation. Uh, let me remind you that uh, the session is recorded uh, and will be available in a week. Uh, also, you can leave your questions uh, on the agenda page and uh, on Discord stream. And uh, in case uh, you ask your question even after the talk, uh, be sure it will be answered in the chat, in Discord chat, or on, on, on the agenda page. So, uh, Zafar, hello. Hello, Ruslan. Hello, guys. Uh, today, I would say we are moving from the east to the west. <laughs> so now we are in uh, Uzbekistan with Zafar and another, I would say, interesting IPAM, IPAM automation framework talk. Uh, so, Zafar, uh, how are you? Great. Thanks. you. What about you? Thank you. I'm, I'm great as well. By the way, what is the weather in Uzbekistan? Oh, right now, recently, it started to be really hot. Uh, you know, it's uh, like 30 plus, and mm -hmm. it's, it's a regular, usual weather here right. outside at right. this time. Right. <laughs> Just talk to the Kazakhstan, your neighbors, I would say, colleagues, and there is a snow oh, yeah, here, yeah. so... <laughs> totally <laughs> different. Unusual, yeah. I guess uh, we can start, Zafar, welcome. Great, let me share my screen. Just let me know when you will see it. Yes, okay. Hello, dear engineers and managers. Thank you for joining me today for this presentation on Codeless Automation. Welcome. My name is Zafar Maksudov, and I'm excited to share some insights with you about this innovative approach to automation called Vividus. With more than three years of experience in functional testing and having used Vividus for over a year, I currently serve as a senior software quality engineer at EPAM. Here's a quick overview of what we'll be covering today, local tools and their benefits compared to scripting tools, Vividus as a codeless automation tool, its benefit to engineers and to customers, statistics with highlighted points, first steps with setup local environment, usage examples with detailed screenshots, and useful links for repository, support channels, and official documentations. So what about low code? Low code automation tools and traditional scripting automation tools have their own advantage and disadvantages. Below are some benefits of using first option with codeless tools comparison to traditional one. Faster learning curve. 
Low-code automation tools can have a shorter learning curve compared to traditional scripting automation tools, enabling developers to gear up to speed quickly and start developing applications and automations faster. The same I can talk about onboarding process as well. Improvement agility. Low-code automation tools enable organizations to respond to changing business needs and market demands more quickly by providing a flexible and scalable platform for application development and automation. Reduced maintenance. Low-code automation tools typically require less maintenance compared to traditional scripting automation tools. This is because pre-built components and templates are often designed to be highly reliable and require minimal updates or changes. Increased collaboration. Low-code automation tools enable multiple team members to collaborate on the development and maintenance of automation solutions. This can lead to faster development times and greater innovations, as ideas and expertise can be shared more easily. Lower development costs. Low-code automation tools typically require less development time and fewer resources than traditional scripting automation tools. This can lead to significant cost saving, particularly for smaller organizations and teams with limited resources. One of the great options on low-code tools would be Vividus. Vividus is an open source automation tool that is designed to help with testing and automation software applications. It offers already implemented solution for testing of most popular application types. Here the sum consists characteristics that Vividus currently processes. Implemented dictionary of test actions, embedded data generation and data transformation mechanics, flexible task test parallelization and multi-platform support, smart visual testing component for UI testing, reporting model and noun issues, future to simplify troubleshooting of test failures, composite steps as additional level of abstraction for business users. Vividus as EPUMS accelerator offer a variety of functionalities for automating end-to-end -end testing. This include like data-driven testing, web UI automation, REST API testing, and database testing. Additionally, Vividus supports integration with several CI-CD services, including Jenkins, Azure DevOps, TeamCity, and Bumble. This tool also compatible with cloud services, such as SourceLab, BrazosTech, and Applitudes as well as test management systems like Zephyr, X-Ray, and Report Portal I.O. Vividus include many beneficial plugins that are suitable for any type of applications that can be used in most cases with elements, data, and even visions. Vividus has three main components on building your tests. Story, scenario, and steps. Story covers per user story in your agile software development cycle or function, component, and other methodologies. And it is file that you named as preferred and generally it is located in the suite folder, such as in BVT tests. Also, you pay attention how business tree for Vividus look alike in IDE in my case, in Eclipse. As for scenarios, they correspond to each of your test cases, and sometimes one scenario may encompass automation coverage of multiple test cases, depending on the conditions. For instance, if a story comprises 10 test cases, then in the ITE there will be one story file containing 10 plus scenarios. Regarding steps, a simple explanation is that one step denotes one action, 
It is normal to have scenarios with 10, 20, 30 steps, since you may need to ensure that all elements exist in a particular screen, or navigate through multiple pages before arriving to your element component in the application. The structure of steps is based on Gherkin syntax, with three primary keywords, given, when, and then. In short, given refers to preconditions, such as saving a value to a variable, when pertains to an event or action, for example, clicking on element, then refers to an expected outcome of what we did in previous steps, such as number of JSON element is greater than or equal to one. Apart from the three main components, there are numerous additional features that can help reduce the complexity of automation coverage and provide more flexibility, resulting in a reduction in time for automation with the same high quality output. One of these features is composite steps, which allow you to create your own step by combining one or more predefined steps. As you can see that uh, in my screenshot, I create a composite step and name it when I log in. The composite step includes another predefined step. So instead of copy passing repeating bunch of steps, I can use only the one step that I created on my own. Variables also play an important role in reducing complexity and decreasing readability by organizing data and values into variables. This could be includes the value of a field in a JSON response of API or generated data for a full name as shown in this example. Lastly, tables. Tables data with examples helps to reduce the repetitiveness of scenarios by organizing data into rows much like Excel file. Each row represents each run of the current scenario. And looking forward to our example, we can see from the results report that there will be three runs of this scenario with a variety of sets of data for first name, last name, and name fields. Let's discuss the benefits of using Vividus for engineers. There are plenty of them, but I want to highlight a few that I have found particularly valuable, which I believe will benefit anyone interested in using this wonderful tool. First, one of the main advantages of Vividus is that it operates as low-code development, which means that you don't need to know any programming languages to start using it. The only things you need to know is English and steps vocabulary, which is used to build in scenarios. Second, learning how to use Vividus effectively is a long-term investment, as you will gain fundamental knowledge of programming concepts, such as variables, if conditions, example tables, regular expressions, fetching data from database or APIs, and more. Additionally, you will learn common programming operations to cover your automation needs, such as using branches and updating them by using special control systems, or pull requests to develop or master repositories. You will also learn how to resolve merge conflicts when your code cannot be merged due to the colleagues having already updated to the same story. Additionally, you will be involved in code reviews, where you will review your colleagues' code and approve or comment on it if something is wrong with coverage. Third, Vividus provides high diversity, making it a valuable tool for automation engineers. We can find opportunity to automate most cases in different ways with a low risk of failure. Furthermore, refactor very quickly and efficiently, even if there was a big update on your already implemented automation coverage. In addition, 
VVDS offers high adaptability, which allows you to create table files and store all accessibility information, such as XPath or ID, and use them anywhere in your stories. Similarly, composite steps enable you to create steps with a group of other steps and use them in the same concept. Finally, Vividus is easy to learn, which means it doesn't take too much time to train new engineers in this field and onboarding process of colleagues to new projects, concept of streamlined onboarding. After mastering your fundamental and basic concepts of using Vividus, you will primarily need the time to refine your practical skills and become proficient in using the tool to its full potential. Vividus offers benefits not only to engineers, but also to customers who appreciate the tool's effectiveness in delivering results in the short term. One of these major benefits is cost optimization. As Vividus is an open source tool that allows free access to its repository for anyone, enabling businesses to save financial costs by providing the necessary resources for automation. Vividus also provides a plug-and-play solution, meaning that customers can use the product immediately after successful deploying the environment, achieving first results as quickly as possible. Vividus has numerous integration with the most popular CICD, cloud, and TMC services which greatly expand automation coverage, scalability, and maintainability. Last one is quite interesting, and it was repeated on previous slide as well. The fast training and onboarding provided by Vividus not only benefit engineers, but also help customers to reduce costs associated with training new employees and improve your return on investment, also called ROI. As you can see, these points are beneficial on both sides, for engineers and customers as well. A win-win situation in other words. Looking forward to our statistics, I would highlight several areas where we have shown steady and consistent growth. Right now, over 40 projects have implemented our tool for the daily automation coverage of tests across a range of applications, including web, mobile, and desktop. We have a strong record of regular releases, with detailed release notes providing one or two times per month. This ensures that our users are constantly benefiting from our latest features and improvements. We have ever-expanding community of over 120 engineers who possess the knowledge and ability to work with Vividus, and this number is continuously growing. Our tool has integration with 10 plus various services, such as cloud, TMC, CICD, providing greater flexibility and customization for our users. And we offer more than 300 available out-of-the-box steps that are compatible with various applications, making it easy for users to streamline their testing processes. Now let's move on on setting your local environment. To download and install Vividus on your machine, please ensure that you have the following prerequisitions. Java Development Kit, JDK, version 17 or higher to process Java files used by Vividus. Git, install it on your terminal if you are using a Mac or as a separate application if you are using Windows to operate with your branches as a version control system. Eclipse or Visual Studio IDE Java Edition, install it on your machine to cover the automation process for your test cases. Lastly, make sure you have installed the GBehave plugin if you are using Eclipse or Vividu Studio extension for your Visual Studio ID to take full advantage of the capabilities of Vividus. 
And let's talk about step-by-step -step procedure that you need to perform. Those steps explain it briefly in high level. First, you need to understand the fundamental concepts of Vivitus to get a knowledge on components like configuration properties, story prioritization, HTTP configuration, sensitive data encryption, and other important features. Second, install all the prerequisitions that were listed in previous slide. Third, set up your project by cloning it using Git and building it with Gradle. Fourth, use your installed IDE to process the automation coverage of your test cases. Finally, view the results of your test execution using the Allure report, which will be discussed more detail on the next slide. For more detailed information on each of these steps, please refer to the official documentation of Vividus, which is linked here in the last point. To illustrate how our tool can automate your test cases, let's use a real-life example from our EPAM website and our objective is to accept the cookie prompt displayed in screenshots. First, we need to open our website epam.com and on main page we need to get Locator for button accept all to our cookie model screen and exactly this Locator we should put to our step when I click on element located by Locator. On the top left hand, we can see how your scenario looks within your IDE's story. Once you run this story successfully, your result will be like on the right hand, indicating that you have accepted all cookies and they are now hidden. Meanwhile, on the bottom left hand, this plays detailed information about your test run results via Allure. Green results with numbers, ticks, and arrows indicate that the story, scenario, and steps have passed respectively. We can also observe which steps passed successfully and how much time it took to process those steps in the test body section. Second example looks almost the same with negative report the result as the end. In this example, we are testing search functionality of the website using the keyword automation. To do this, we need to identify the locators for search icon, text field, and find button. Once we have all of these, we can incorporate them into our test steps along with the keyword automation. And the result of your step will be when I enter automation in field located by Lakata, and when I click on element located by Lakata. On the right hand, actual result in your website. On the left hand, what we got in our test run results. The main point in results is that we have fail results for our story, scenario, and last step. If you will pay attention, we check that automation QQQ is shown in our web page, but it should be only automation without triple Q. And red bar at the bottom shows that the visitors have not found that element, which is right. Fix will be super easy. Change automation triple Q to automation. And after that, you will get best results for everything. Here are some useful links that may help you in discovering most answers to your how-to inquiries and getting in touch with Vivito's team from support channels. There are links to GitHub repository, official documentation, support channels on Slack and Skype, Twitter page, and email for Vivito's support. That's all from my side. Thank you for joining me today for this presentation. I hope you found information informative and useful. 
If you have any question or would like to learn more about the topic, please feel free to reach me out through Teams or Outlook. And special thanks to my colleague Anton Prohorczyk for providing additional information and assisting revisions to me. Now I'm ready to answer your questions. Thank you, Zafar. Thank you for the very interesting demo. While our, our colleagues are writing their questions, I guess uh, let me ask a few of my questions. Uh, by the way, uh, could you please tell me what is the uh, future perspective of development of this tool? Thank you for your question. Uh, as I said before on slide statistics, we are gradually and steady growing day by day. Also, every day engineers report the bugs and ask new features by creating tickets in GitHub and you can observe them just by going to its repository of users. Uh, by the way, uh, do you track you know, any kind of usage uh, spreading of this tool outside the pump? Uh, from outside the pump, yes, mm -hmm. we... Uh, Again, as I said, that uh, from the statistics, we have not only projects within the EPAM, but also in outside, and we constantly receiving uh, some of these improvement tickets and uh, from our support on Skype, which is, there are a lot of requests uh, from outside as well to have integration maybe to some services or maybe additional steps to cover that. So, Test cases. Thank you. Thank you so far. Uh, what about turning materials? Is it enough, you know, just for me to start learning and practicing in solo, or, you know, it requires somebody as a manager who has experience you know, with this tool to assist me, you know, with implementing the tool on the project? Well, that's a really interesting question. Mm, it's really depending on your test automation skills. On the other hand, anyone can easily start a solo. Uh, well, it's really mm -hmm. depends on your automation skills, but you can also master yourself. You still need this fundamental knowledge and practice on those skills. Otherwise, it is recommended to have a mentor with relevant skills or often deal with support channel. Thank you, thank you, Zafar. Uh, more questions. Uh, for example, currently I'm working as automation test engineer in Java. Could you please tell me what kind of benefit uh, I can get from low code tools on my project and, and in my career in general? Well, as I said before, using this tool has numerous benefits for both you and your clients. Additionally, uh, you can also contribute to the tool's development since it is written in Java, so it will be improve your Java programming mm -hmm. skills, like win-win situation. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. Thank you for the answer. Uh, another question. Uh, you said that working with Vividos on a real project would be long-term investment. Uh, does it mean that uh, I can move, uh, for example, on further, let's say, to automation testing with programming language or to software engineering more easily? Well, you know, all those things that I mentioned on this benefit, like wearable, if conditions, code review, match conflicts, branch control, all of them goes to managing your code. And these basics are also be provided, let's say, in the master's degree of your computer science in university. In short mm -hmm. term, if you will learn one of the programming languages that required to continue this path, mm -hmm. then yes, it will be easier to process for you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you, Zafar, for the answer. And another question, uh, on my project, I have a bunch of uh, REST API endpoints. Uh, is it possible to validate and automate these cases related to them? Yes, yes, of course. Like we have a separate plugins for REST and for JSON. 
and which allow you to, uh, as an automation tester, to cover those cases. For example, the step when I execute a HTTP GET request for a resource with URL. For mm -hmm. sending request and step, when I save JSON element by JSON path to save JSON value into variable from your response. In this case, all your response with those data or fields and value, you can automate it how you want. Thank you, Zafar. Uh, thank you, Zafar, for the very interesting talk and interesting discussion. Thank you, the audience, for the listening. And we will be, we'll be, get back to you quite soon with the next topic. Thank you. We hope you finish with it. Thank you all. Have a good day. Bye. Thank you.